Well, good morning, folks. Have you been looking at the Globe Hackers Facebook news dump? Man, uh, things are getting wild in France and uh, other parts of Europe. Of course, we have the war going on in Ukraine. And the United States is hell bent on instigating a war with China. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, yeah, we can talk about Iraq and uh, Afghanistan and Central America and Vietnam and all these other things. But this is unprecedented because China is such a huge po country, popula population, Because China has such a big population and it's responsible for producing so many goods and services now. It's a big economy with a global footprint and lots of people depend on China for all kinds of things. Um, it's not like bombing Iraq. Yeah, so um, it's just such a different scale to think about a war with China because they have a lot of soldiers, they have a lot of, uh, you know, enough resources to make a run uh, at whatever country might want to attack it. And uh, the rhetoric saying that China is planning to attack America or something like that is just patently ridiculous. I can't imagine why people would say that unless they had a financial motivation um, because it's just so absurd and ridiculous and any argument made by a pom-pom boy a cheerleader for the status quo and for the players and mainstream media and so on I call them pom-pom boys because they read one article in The Economist and they think they're experts. They don't even look across, uh, you know, Forbes and Bloomberg and New York Times and then alternative media outlets and so on. It's just one thing that appeals to their biases and they're done and dusted. They have a perfect opinion on the matter. But anyway, pom-pom boys might be excited about a war with China. I don't think the rest of the world is. And they're really gearing up for it. I mean, is it all for show? I don't think so. You know, the special forces are preparing for amphibious landings on islands in the Pacific that we haven't seen since World War II and whatnot. Meanwhile, I mean, that's absurd. It's a nuclear power, uh, extremely integrated into the global economic system. Uh, Chinese people don't hate the West. Um, anyway, Zelensky and all the oligarchs and the players in Ukraine are selling their country to the highest bidders in America and the West. You see the same concerns in France by students who are worried that Macron and his cronies are just going to turn France into a a mini-me, Uncle Sam, uh, neoliberal, uh, unregulated, global finance <laughs> kind of economy, which would be terribly tragic. Meanwhile, people are trying to talk sense about real problems and issues that we have to face. Um, around the usual things, uh, economics and um, the sixth extinction and environmental and material concerns, energy concerns, uh, climate concerns. But never mind all that, sometimes I feel like really the players are just trying to uh, garner as much control over events as they can possibly have because they're already so filthy rich. You know, they make more money in their sleep than thousands of us would ever dream of making in 10 lifetimes. 
And um, obviously, with all the technocratic tools that they have available to them, the resources that they have, and because they got lucky and they're rich, they think they're smart and know what's best. Uh, it seems like, you know, you have Christian fanatics who just chalk it up to the end of the world scenarios uh, and God's plan, nothing we can do about it. Maybe some uh, Islamic people might feel the same way you know it is written God's will what will be what will what will be will be or it's all good or you can't do anything about it fatalism there's lots of, of fantasizers thinking about sovereign man and singularities and accelerationism and all this kind of thing philosophizers and intellectual influencers and sense makers and corporate consultants with really fine ideas and 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 refined vocabularies um, that they use to to earn a living which there's nothing wrong with that but the common people are just shut out and you look at people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and you realize just how completely narrow and shallow their understanding of how the world works is. Not saying she's ignorant or she's stupid. Obviously, every one of us is ignorant of some things. We have gaps in our knowledge. But for many of us, including most people in Congress, they're understanding of how things work is shallow even with all the resources they have and simplistic and news generated mimetic and these are the people that are in washington who believe that they're going to make a difference that they're doing it for a better america <laughs> you know whatever their america is whether you you know, patchwork it into red and blue and, and just point to one America and say, I work for those people. Or, you know, people who believe the memes, the conspiracy theories and whatnot, I work for them. You know, you may have great intuitions about what's going on, like I, when I'm talking about the players wanting more control so that they can uh, wrap up their gated communities, their arcs, uh, for when um, most of us are dying because of violence and climate change and war. Uh, at the end of the day, they're going to be hanging out at the country club with their robots, and there will be far fewer people on the planet, so they'll have more for themselves. You know, imagine a world not like Pareto or something, where the elites, there's only elites, elites and robots. Um, and they fight among themselves. They compete for whatever they compete for. Not this churning of people who have equality of opportunity to rise up, to become better, to achieve success, but uh, just people who are the survivors, and they're all elites. They're all real smart people, genetically engineered, and... Uh, you know, they, they do all the right things to stay young and strong and competitive. And that's all there is left in the world, uh, except for all the tools, the machines that keep the country club running. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can think of all kinds of great science fiction scenarios about what it's going to look like in 10 or 15 years, not 50. But... Yeah, it's, uh, it's at the point now where, you know, however you want to think about it or define it, depending on how deeply you've looked into the terminology, you know, neoliberal global capitalism and the players that run that show, that game, that Texas Hold'em sit-down fair, uh, depending on how you want to think about that, 
There's an intuition deep within all of us that somehow this thing is going south, that it's not going to work out. And I think climate change is probably one of the main reasons because everybody's finally, you know, seeing things for what they are and it's kind of hard to ignore. And, and if you're an elite, then you have access to information and whether you want to deny it or not, uh, you will see what's happening. So maybe there's this sense that uh, we've got to get everything sorted out. We've got to get everything. We have to own and control everything before uh, the great simplification, as Nate Hagens calls it, starts to click in. Uh, and you have people in real serious trouble. Uh, you don't want revolution. You don't want the chaotic masses, you know, uh, coming for blood. You've got to control them with all your power and technocratic skill to avoid uh, the angry mob. <laughs> and there are me millions of mechanisms to do that. Not all of them uh, blatantly in your face, coercive or violent, but just allowing people to get enough mind numbing uh, dopamine hits or whatever, serotonin jabs to get through the day. Yeah, is it that time now where it's the mad, mad uh, project to just... Yeah, why, why do you want a war with China? You, is it that you want to depopulate the, the planet? You think war is a good strategy for that? And Malthusian people who think population is the main issue. Are you willing to step down to exit this mortal coil to uh, live up to your principles? Or are you just going to ask the other guy to die? The other person not to have babies, you know? <laughs> what, what, what are you going to do? And getting ahead of these things... Um, so that you have more options, right? So saying one child policy for, for now, it's draconian, but it gives us more options later. Um, things like that. Uh, New Zealand, when they shut down for COVID, knowing that more data would come out and they would probably have more options for what to do later if they just controlled it at the outset. Or just doing nothing and letting what whatever happens happen. Anyway, those are different discussions, but I kind of have this feeling that this absurdity, like why do people sit down and just calmly accept the hawkish rhetoric towards China when everything they've bought in the last 30 years was made there? And if you didn't want the government to send your jobs abroad, why did you just passively sit there and allow it to happen without even learning how the game works? Labor arbitrage, global capital, deregulation of banks, and so on and so forth. You just don't care. You're too worried about uh, rainbow flags or uh, gun rights or... Uh, you know, when does the soul enter an angel on the head of a pin or whatever the heck culture wars stuff we're all concerned about. And meanwhile, the players just get to code the capital, like I've said a million times. They get to hire the suits to lobby the legislators to create the law to allow them to play the kind of game they want to play. And then they feed us bullshit like some of it's going to trickle down to us. Or we have more choices now because we can choose from iPhone this to iPhone that to Samsung this and that. Fast fashion and cereal boxes. These are our choices. When... For many of us, we don't perceive that we're living a quality life, a meaningful life. So you have the sense makers and the John Vervecki and you have Schmachtenberger and you have all these other people 
talking about childhood trauma and, you know, uh, social media and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, everyone from all angles uh, and perceptions of the whole gray scale from left to right, extreme left to extreme right, um, are focused in on their thing, but we're losing the big picture, what it means to be human. And it may require some effort and work to learn about that. And we may not have the uh, socio-cultural milieu to be al allowed or able to do that. So we'll have to seek out information in an autodidact type fashion, you know, kind of training ourselves how to train ourselves, how to find the right mentors or the right information to help us move forward and make decisions that benefit us and our communities. Really difficult ask, actually, when you have so many things coming at you and, and you're just a human being who has to sleep and eat and work and uh, get on with life. It's a big ask. So you have these tiny little bubbles where people seem to know what's going on. And of course, they're not impacting the masses that much. But then you see the young French students, uh, a couple of them on a couple broadcasts articulating their concerns. And you think these kids are pretty switched on. How long will that last? And when you talk about the capacity to know and understand, uh, how, how, how big is that? How resilient is that? And how much of it can you act on when, you know, when there's this big push to control everything? You know, it's not about a conspiracy of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It's just about the fact that Bill has a shitload of capital and he can buy as much land as he wants. So is Bill going to be the kind of benevolent landlord that you want? And, you know, when the king comes along, is that king really going to be wise and concerned about people's welfare? <laughs> the elites and so on, it just never seems to turn out that way if you look back at history. You have a good one and a bad one. And it just goes like that. Good king, bad king. And the good king uh, reforms the things that the bad king left behind that screwed things up. And then the bad king comes along and, and wrecks all the good king's work when, when he comes along. And we're supposed to put our faith in that. Or... Yeah, how do we get to scale in terms of people's understanding of how the thing works? You know, everybody's got these projects. They're getting very little traction when you compare them to the Met Gala or the Uf UFC this weekend or whatever. The NFL or the desire to snort cocaine, you know. it's uh, It seems like they're... The players, the people who have the capital and the power and uh, the ability to control things are going to want to control more and more things because they're going to think that they know better because of their position. And they don't really want to leave things uh, to, to fate because uh, if the masses do get too pissed off, it's going to be mayhem. And then you look at all these private armies in Russia for Gazprom and across the United States and the world. All these militias, all the energy we spend on these high-tech weapons and then Russia can just make, you know, uh, simple shells and just keep firing them, <laughs> you know, and which is going to win? You know, some World War II shell blows up a HIMAR. You know, one is $30 million and the munitions are astronomical. The other one's cheap. But somehow we, we want to put all our energy into innovation around weaponry. Does this make sense? 
but it's lucrative for a certain segment of, you know, the economy. And you probably are not shareholders in that segment of the economy. If, if you are, congratulations, you're going to make some money. Uh, but uh, the rest of us just get squeezed and killed. You know, and when the when inflation happens and the prices go up, they never go back down to, you know, 2017 prices. It never happens that way, you know. Somehow it just goes up, but we notice it less while our wages are falling. It's so odd. I just don't see how, how we get out of it. There's no way we're going to invest trillions of dollars a year. Uh, you know, all as a global economy to address climate. We're still giving subsidies to oil companies. You know, the game is about energy and cobalt and minerals and copper and economic growth, you know, uh, selling more shit to the sewer. That's, that's it. And we're pedal to the metal there. There's no idea you know that people just don't want to adopt the fact that they're they're going to consume less it's almost like inflation after i had a choice of twenty thousand different boxes of cereal why would i go back to only two you know uh once i have fast fashion and i can have a new shirt every week why would i go back to just having one little closet full of stuff that I've been wearing for years. That I might turn over every few years or so. Um, or buy a pair of shoes that last 20 years. Why would I do that? Once, once all these things are in play and we're used to it, it's difficult to, for us to, to leave it behind and give it up. And we grew up this way. Like I'm saying in my uh, grayscale right wing thing, um, Sorry, folks, you were born during modernity. You were born in a liberal, enlightenment, uh, rational, scientific, high-tech world. You know, you weren't born uh, in the th in the, Let's say you were born in 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 nineteen ten and grew up with Salazar. No, it's sorry, you weren't. You were born in in. Uh, you know, 1990 or 2000 or whatever. So you may be able to fantasize about going back to a world like that, but you have no idea of how to get there or whether if you did, it'd be a good thing. What genies are we going to uh, corral and put back in the bottle? You know, genie wranglers. So they vote to slow down the dissemination of, of AI and large language models and things like that. <clears throat> yeah, let's slow down for a few months. But you still have the multipolar trap. You still have various entities that behind closed doors are still working on everything. And it's just a matter and matter of time until they're out there in the world or being used by power structures or corporations or governments to achieve their ends, you know? Uh, maybe you'll be able to get a job, you know, um, typing things into a box for the AIs to work on. I don't know. Or we're all going to go back to the land and try to figure out a way to grow spuds and have babies and worship Jesus. I don't know. But it seems like we're not going to know what hit us because it's all a big black box full of black boxes. And even if we learn a bit of vocab and understand a teeny weeny little bit about how this or, or that thing works. We, our knowledge is still extremely shallow. You know, people talk about fine grain or resolution, things like that. That's all really exciting 
for managers and business people when they're trying to deal with decision making and whatnot. It's all very exciting, but most people just don't have access to that. So what we're saying is, look, leave the world in the hands of people who know how to control it, who have power and money and influence and resources. Don't worry your pretty little head about it. If we need you to go to war in, you know, to land on the beaches of Okinawa or Taiwan, just sign up and be a hero. Support the troops, tie a yellow ribbon around it. Or, you know, just get on with it. Tighten your belt, you know. Uh, have less, uh, figure, figure it out. You're all gonna die anyway because we'll be, many places on earth will be wet bulb temperatures in no time. So lots of people are just gonna overheat and die if you don't have air conditioning. And we have energy problems, we have food problems, so maybe there's going to be more starvation in the world. Maybe there's going to be more refugees in the world, more migration and so on, more unrest, because people are going to be pissed off at all that stuff. So, yeah, you, you, you can't do anything about it, right? So just let those people, you know, the CCP or the single party system in the United States, which is neoliberal, global, financialized, unregulated capitalism, do all the decision making. They can market to you. They can sell to you. They can give you all kinds of really fun propaganda and PR. And you can watch all the stars and the elites on TV having fun and you can aspire to be that. So don't worry your pretty little head about it. You know, you can't change anything. So just hang, hang tough. People talk about eating crickets, you know, uh, Soros. Or some superhero rich guy uh, wants you to eat crickets. No, we'll eat crickets because there won't be any wheat. Uh, you know, we'll eat other things because cows and chickens and pigs... Uh, just can't be grown anymore for one reason or another, either because of feed stocks, because of the lack of our ability to, to do nitrogen fixing because of, of uh, you know, scarcity of oil or whatever. And that day will come and then we'll have to eat what, what we eat. You know, the fish are not there anymore, so we'll eat something else, algae. And we'll make it taste like tuna. And it'll all be just fine. Because we don't have any power. We're hopeless, helpless, powerless. And so let, let the elites sort it out. Maybe we'll have a benevolent king who will be kind of nice to us. Maybe Macron does have our best interests at heart. And President Trump or Biden are going to just come up with very special genius things to get us involved in so we don't pay attention to what's going on. It's all a big magic trick. Only it's not as in, as entertaining as David Blaine. You know, it's like a shell game, but uh, you never win, but it doesn't matter because you think next time you're going to win. So you keep throwing down the fibers until you broke. All right. Talk to you later. Yeah, too. It's like a Chevy Ford Driving on the road like I'm the only one Shooting to the green, I talk a hole in one Bible on the dash, they with the holy wine I know I put in work, they didn't notice none Switch gears, clubhouse, took me six years Marble floors, gold trim, feel like I'm Richie Rich Tiny left, French sway, I mix the fist sick Quick laws, take a risk, we play for the win Chips all on the board, no I'm invested